guys so good that you can join me again today in case you're new to my channel let me introduce myself my name is margaret i am from the netherlands that's why i have a lovely accent i'm a paper crafting junk journaling vintage treasure hunter yep i have a lovely project with prototypes on my desk today let me show you and tell you all about it this project is not for your junk journal however it is junk journal related it will not fit in your junk journal because these are boxes small ones cute ones that you can make from scrapbook paper or cardstock or you know a little bit heavier paper maybe you can even make them from very heavy book pages i don't know i haven't tried it before now what are these boxes for i use these to hold my bits and bobs like poster stamps labels stickers fuzzy cuts whatever you want even the if you have them a little bit bigger like this one it could sort of hold some uh, washi tapes uh, they're very very handy to have on your desk to put all your bits and bobs in and they're also so much fun to make so let me tell you um, what supplies we'll be needing and uh, how we're gonna make these for the papers I'm using, uh, this is scrapbook paper, this is from uh, Elizabeth Craft Designs, and this is a print from Artology. It's a digital, printed on 100, 160 grams um, copy paper. Not copy paper, photo paper. Photo paper. For paper, I'm using different uh, types. This is a digital from Artology. I am going to link her shop below she has an etsy shop lovely paper love it love it and this is printed on 160 grams it's sort of a photo paper quality uh, not a shiny not a glossy one just a matte one and this is from uh, elizabeth craft designs one of her reminiscence books um i have almost all of them i love them and this is let's see how how heavy is this uh wow this is 250 grams even yeah this is like the same as scrapbook paper and then and a piece of scrapbook paper yeah so that's it for the paper for the tools we are going to use mostly basics glue scissors i'm going to use a marker because eyesight <laughs> uh, a paper trimmer to cut the longer pieces and a scoreboard now let me tell you about the scoreboard normally i'd say you don't need a scoreboard you can use um your ruler and then mark everything and measure everything and fold it you could but this project is going to have a lot of measuring involved that's why i really want to use my scoreboard no worries guys i am going to write down um all the measure measurements in the description box below yeah and i'm also going to show them on camera and you can write them down yourself but i think you're going to need a scoreboard for this one this is a big one from we are memory keepers this is 12 by 12 in inches uh you can also use a smaller one you don't need to have like bigger pieces so if you have a scoreboard please take out your scoreboard i will attempt to do three sizes of these boxes here's the one that i've made early early this year i believe it was in february when i just started my channel um so i have a video on this box don't watch it it's rubbish <laughs> honestly it is rubbish what i want to do today is three different sizes boxes with paper no larger than um a 12 by 12 but you can make them uh, from much smaller papers mind you um, i do prefer the paper to be double-sided because i also want the inside of the box to look nice yeah that's why i'm using double-sided paper great now let's start with the biggest box i'm going to start with the biggest box yeah for the biggest box that is four by four it will be four by four by one inch um high I'm going to use the biggest piece of paper. So this is a, a 12 by 12. We don't need 12 by 12. We actually need a lot less. But for the base, for this one, let's say this is the base and this is the lid. Don't know what exactly to call it, but you know, base, lid. For the base, we need a piece of paper that is 6 by 8. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this 6 by 8. That's the first piece of um, paper. Yeah, then for the lid is going to be a different size for the lid i'm going to have four and one eighth and eleven and one eighth sounds sort of 
ridiculous why I have one eight, but I'm going to uh, explain why I need just the one eight of an inch more than four and eleven. So I'm going to make two pieces, six by eight and four and one eight by eleven and one eight. Write it down. I'll be right back with my cut pieces. Here they are. Let me try to explain immediately where the one eighth of an inch comes from. Why? Why would you want that? Well, um, as you can see, if you look close closely, the lid is a tiny bit smaller than the box itself. Yeah, it just sticks out a little bit. Um, whatever you do, however you sort of push it. So the, the sides of the box just pop out a little bit. I don't want that. I want the box to be inside of the lid. That is why I've made the box for this one one eighth of an inch wider. Let's say wider because I really want this to be in here and not show it anymore. Yeah. And then I also want it to be taller. If you have it the exact same size as the box, it will be very hard to push this box in. So I want to leave a little bit of room, the tiniest bit of room to have the box in easier. Yeah. Then just, you know, trying to, you, know, you love my sound effects? Yeah. <laughs> trying to push it in really hard. So uh, the lid is going to be one eighth of an inch uh, taller and wider. That's where the one eighth of an inch comes from. I will try to explain uh, the reason behind the measuring. Hopefully, in that case, it will make more sense to you. If not, if you're like, Margaret, I do not want my brain to hurt, then just follow the instructions. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm going to start with the boxy part. Yeah, this piece of paper is was six by eight, right? Yes, six by eight. We're going to have the, uh, the paper at six. Yes, so the smaller size is on the top. We're going to make two scores. One at one inch over here. And now what you can do is score it at five. I never do that. I'm just going to flip the whole thing over and then score it at one again. So we need one inch on both sides of the paper. Then we're going to turn the paper. Again, I'm just going to score at one. One. And another one at two. So score at one and at two. Flipping it all over, doing the same. So at one and at two. It sounds difficult. It's not. One, 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 one. Yeah? Okay. We did all the scoring. Now we're going to do the folding. Mind you, I will burnish it really, really well. Yeah? Come start with the sides and the sides for me are the most important to burnish really really well why because if you don't burnish the sides well uh, it will sort of stick out and we don't want it we want it to be really really straight not sort of like more roundish i'm i'm not making any sense i know i can say the dutch word but no i won't don't want it to be like this shape i want it to be straight really really straight so i am burnishing it really really well there you go so these are the longer sides where we just made one inch one inch yes then we fold it open again and then there are two score lines here each of one inch so i'm gonna fold this one up there you go. And I'm doing the other one as well. Again, I'm just burnishing it really, really well. The first box is the hardest. <laughs> but I did all the hard stuff, guys. I did all the measuring and such. Uh, and hopefully to make it easier for you. There you go. So I'm going to turn it over. Hopefully you can see. There's now a sort of a square in the middle that is four by four inches. And this is one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is draw a line where we need to cut. We, because we need to make four snippies. Very easy. But let me show you. I'm going to draw a pencil line or a marker line where we're going to cut them. So I marked it everywhere. Yeah. Let me show you. There's a, a score line here. And I drew a line. 
up until the second score line. There's a score line here as well. I just dotted it. So do not draw a line un up until this line, but on this to the second one. Yes. So this is a crossroads where all four um, sort of the lines come together. There's also crossroads here. Skip the first crossroad and then and then you go to the right. <laughs> so I did that on all four corners. Yeah. So what we need to do is make a snippy just on the longest side up until this crossroads. Now there is a, a, a sort of a fold here. Um, if you cut it, one half of the fold will be on one side and one half on the other side or what have you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at one side of the fold. All the way up to this point. And I'm also going to snip off the other side of the fold. So the flap that we're left with is just the tiniest bit smaller. Just the tiniest bit. I'm taking out like a sliver. Like this. On all four sides. I'm also going to do that on the outer part. Just a sliver. You can slant it, guys, if you want to. Just a sliver. I will tell you why we do this once we get to all the folding. So I'm going to show you again. There's a sort of score line here, a fold in the middle that is always a little bit wider than your cut. So I'm going to cut on one side of the fold and then on the other side of, of the fold. Basically, I'm just snipping out where I did the black marker and also just on the outside Tiniest bit, tiniest bit. See, that's really, really tiny. I'm going to do this one on camera, just all four of them. Here you go. And then this one, just snipping it out. Don't snip it out a lot. It needs to be a tiny sliver. This is all for folding. If you fold it in, we want it to be nice and um, everything matches up. Do not want anything bulky in here. On one side and on the other side. Here you go. And the last side. There you go. Look at all the snippies. Now we're going to do a little more folding and gluing. So now we're going to fold it slash glue it. Yes, we're going to fold these two pieces up. You have these four flappies. I'm going to fold this one in and this one in. Like so. Also on the bottom. So the four pieces are on the inside. Almost looks like a box, right? Yeah. Be sure that this is nice and straight and not sort of curved. It needs to be straight. Otherwise, your box will be bigger than we want it to be. Okay, these are folded in. Now we're going to fold this one up and over. See? Well, we need to glue it down. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So what I do, this is my method. I just put glue on these outsides here. Just a tiny bit to hold it. This is art glitter glue. Uh, when I made this box, I did not even have art glitter glue. So I needed some clips to hold it down and such. I'm going to fold this up. Yes, so we're going to glue these two pieces over here. Now, if these pieces were just um, cut without taking the sliver off, it would not really hold because it would be too big. Now you have a little bit of wiggle room to really sort of fold this over and it will fit. Otherwise, this would sort of curl and this would curl. Everything would curl. That's why I'm taking off out these tiny, tiny slivers. So now I'm going to glue this a piece uh, in, of course. So again, I am using art glitter glue. Now, in case this doesn't really fit, you can always sort of slant these, yes, these corners. If you have problems with the folding and the cutting and such. There's one side. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So the bigger flap, the, the flap is here. We're going to fold in. We're going to fold this up. But first we're going to glue these. Just a bit of glue so it will hold. Can you see? Yes. 
on this big box they match up uh, on the smaller bo boxes they will overlap much easier but on this on this one it's just it matched up and then we put glue here and fold it in like so now art glitter glue uh, dries glues and dries very fast uh, if not, put paper clips on or bulb clips or anything that will hold it sort of in place. What have we there? Look, that's the inside of the box. Right. Now we need to do the outside. Now for the cover or the lid. I want this to be on the outside. So I am going to flip it over for now. Yeah, there we go. So maybe, hopefully, you have a scoreboard with one sixteenth of an inch mine doesn't it is it's like half one uh one eighth of an inch in case you're dutch and you're like what yeah one <laughs> half of one eighth of an inch um but we can also mark one sixteenth of an inch it will make sense once we get there have it in the length yes uh we're going to score at one this score is going to be very easy at one over here i'm going to flip it over do another one at one now here is where it gets a little bit tricky i have zoomed you in guys because now we actually need to make a score at five and one sixteenth of an inch there is no five and one sixteenth of an inch on here there's five and one eighth so we actually need the middle yes the middle of the in between these so that's why i'm taking out my marker and i'm just making a small dot in the middle between five and five and one eight yeah and then i'm going to move my paper to let's say five and one eight so there is a slot underneath and i'm going to score it like so so now we basically scored at five and one sixteenth of an inch yeah um, we can flip it over and do the same. I am not going to because what we need after this score is another full inch. So I'm going to match this line up that we made with a full inch. Like 6, you could put it at 7 or 5, whatever you want. At a full inch and then I'm going to score again at the next inch. So this is an inch. So I'm going to score at 7. So the, the width between these two is again what 1 inch. That leaves us with this whole bit is again four and one sixteenth of an inch <laughs> so let me show you again really quick you score at one yes then you need to score at five and one sixteenth of an inch so i put a dot in between the two move it a little bit further scored at five and one eighth yes then move the same dot to a full inch like say six and then i scored at seven because i needed another whole inch yes so if we if we flip this over and you look at this second score here that we made is again at five and one sixteen of an inch i know guys it is difficult um but it works it works if you don't have the one sixteen just put it uh dot there and then sort of maneuver it yeah so let me show you what we did let's do some folding yeah we fold here at a one inch yes then the next core is here then the next core is again one inch also going to tell you what all the inches uh, are and such let me fold it first for you there you go the first inch i'm going to take out this lid to show you the first inch is this one then this is the four and one sixteenth of an inch then this is the next inch one four and one sixteenth of an inch and another inch one inch four and one sixteenth one inch four and one sixteenth one inch so you start with an inch you end with an inch and there's an inch between the middle straight between the middle now what we do is 
Fold it, fold it, fold it. And you glue it here. Yeah? Does it make any sense? Hopefully it does. I'm just going to use art for this. Fold it up, fold it up, fold it up. There you go. Make sure it lines up on all sides. There you go. It will still be a little bit hard to get the box in the first time. But it would be way harder if we did not do the 1 16th of an inch bigger. It just gives a little more room. I'm just sort of pressing it down with my bone folder. See? Okay. Um, these sides of the box where we put the flap open are the more sturdier sides. And I think it's much easier to pull the box out on this end or this end instead of the smaller end. So I'm going to push it in like so. Now hopefully this fits. Yes, it does. See? And then you, you slide it in. You slide it in. You don't see the box sticking out on all the sides. Looks like this. We made a box. Fantastic. Now, again, what I did <laughs> was glue the whole box before I did all the decorating on here. I'm going to do that with the next boxes. Before I glue these parts down, I want to decorate on the, let's call it the cover, on the top, on the front. Yeah, it's so cute, guys. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ink all around it. And then um, I'm going to make the smaller one with you guys and decorate it. For the next box, which is this size, with a, which is uh, three and a half by three. So three by three and a half. That's the inside of the box. Yeah, this one, this size. We're going to need two pieces of paper, one of which is five by seven and a half inches it's the bigger piece that's the inside of the box then the outside of the box we need three and five eighths three and five eighths by nine and one eighths yes normally it would say three and a half by nine but we need the one eight yes to make it sort of fit really really well again i am going to put the measurements and down below in the description box now, the measuring is going to be the same. Well, for the box at least, it's going to be very, well, it's, it's similar. You score at one on the longer side. Again, you score at one on the longer side. Yes. Then you turn it on its, like, um, wider side. This is landscape. Yeah. Then you score at one and at two. Flip it over, you score at one and at two. There you go. Yeah, uh, I think I want to have this on the outside, this on the inside. Yeah, I'm going to mark the second crossroads over here. Draw a quick line in the middle of the fold. There you go. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. Yeah. Also, you need to fold it, love. I know. I'm going to fold it. See, I'm folding it. Don't worry. I was going to fold it. So, fold it on all the, on the score lines that we made. So, I printed this. I'm making this box from an A4 sheet. Actually, doesn't fit. Uh, so you need two A4 sheets for this one. Or, you know, do it from um, a, a piece of scrapbook paper. Because the longest piece that we need is 9 and 1 8. And um, that's not long enough. But it will if you're going to use a 12 by 12. There you go. Now, I'm going to make all the scores and do the snippies i'm just gonna do one on camera see we need to cut this bit over here i am cutting on the right hand of this score and on the left hand of this score yep 
and on the outer part. Up until the second crossroads, yes. I'm gonna do that to all four corners. So we did all the snippies. Now we're gonna do some gluing again. These flappies go on the inside. See, with this size, they overlap, which is a good thing because I'm just gonna put this together. I'm gonna put glue here and then here. Mind you, this needs to be straight. Yes, so have this straight and then glue these two pieces together. And then you can flip this over for the box sides. There you go. If you don't have art glitter glue, um, be sure to put a clamp on it, uh, like a paper clip or a ball clip or what have you, just to be sure it is dry it's stuck down. Yeah. It's a little bit too close together. Okay. I still unframe hope so. There's still a little bit. Uh oh, this is art. Oops. Well, that works. <laughs> I glue them too close together. What happens then? Uh, that this space is too small for this whole flap. This works. Oh, it needs to be glued here. And there you go. Part one, cute little boxy. Now for the lid. Now hopefully my measurements are correct. I think I think they are. But you know, it's me, so you never know. Make sure what you want to have on the outside. I think I want this to be the outside. So I'm putting it down like so. We are going to make a score at one. Again, very simple. To make it even more simple, I am going to score on the other side as well at one. Yes. Now we need, this is three inches. So we need it to be a little bit wider, which means three and one sixteenth of an inch. Yes. We already scored at one. So we actually need to score at four and one sixteenth of an inch. Yeah. So I am again going to, oh, I'm going to flip this around because this is black. I won't see what I'm doing. I'm going to measure it from this side. I'm going to make a mark, zooming you in guys, between four and oh, four and one eighth. So four and one sixteenth of an inch. Hello. Yep, there you go. Just in the middle. Then I'm going to move it to a slot. Scoring it. Yes. And then I'm moving this score to a complete inch, a full inch. Let's say five. And then I'm scoring at six because I need another sort of part of one inch. There you go. And then this is automatically a three and one sixteenth of an inch that we need. So you just have to do the trick with measuring between four and four and one eight just once. Yeah, if you do the other side as well. Hopefully that'll make sense. Okay, then we're going to do all the folding. Here's one. Now I'm so hoping this measurement worked out. <laughs> I think it did, but you know, you never, you never know. For the piece, I did uh, two times this width, like three inches. So that's six inches plus um, three inches because you have one side, one side and a double side. So one, one, one plus three is nine, but we needed one eighth of an inch. So nine and one eighth. For all you sort of geekies, geekies, mad lovers out there, what did you do? That's what I did. But you know, just have me do all the measuring for you guys. Well, that sort of worked. See, I made a boxy. Now uh, we're going to glue it. Making 
sure all ends meet. I'm just taking my bone folder to sort of press it down. Yeah. Boxy. Now, hopefully, hopefully this works. It does. See, first time it takes a little bit to maneuver it in. But once you sort of closed it and opened it a couple of times, it sort of fits perfectly. So we made box number two. Again, I forgot to... I'm going to do all the decorating afterwards, yes? The only problem is I don't have a surface underneath then to stick it. But, you know, I have art and art will glue very quickly. Let's do the last one. Now for the smallest box, that is actually... Three by two and a half inches. So it's a tiny bit smaller than this one. See? For that, I'm going to need two pieces of paper. One is going to be three and one eighth of an inch by eight and one eighth of an inch. That's going to be the lid. And then the other one for the box, we have four and a half by seven. Yes? Again, I'm going to link it down below. Well, write it down below. Right, what we want to have on the inside of the box. I think this one. Yes, I want to have this on the inside. Right, uh, guess what? We are going to make a score at one inch. We know that by now, right? And also on the other side, one inch on the longer parts. Then on the wider part, one inch, two inch, flipping it over, one inch, two inch. Yeah? Making the scores. This is easy. This principle is for all the boxes. But you can have this, uh, you can have a higher box or a smaller box. Then you need to do one and a half inch or uh, half an inch. But then you need to alter all the other all the other measurements. So don't do it. <laughs> Just do my measurements. But experiment with it. Why don't you? Yeah. See what works for you. This is the first time I'm using um, Elizabeth Craft Designs paper for uh, scoring and such. So I'm just see, I'm having a look how it sort of works. But it holds well. It holds well. It does. So now we did all the folding again. I'm going to mark at the second crossroads over here. Then on all four corners making the snippies. Guys, I'm going to make the snippies off camera later. Let's While we're folding, let's do this one. Um, I want this on the outside, right? Yes, this is going to be on the inside. So we are going to mark score at one. Easy, right? Then another one at one. Now, we need to think how wide was this one. This was uh, two and a half. The width so we need to make a mark at three between three and a half and three and five eighths right yes now oh, hopefully yes if not then i'm stupid now one is two and a half is three and a half yes between three and a half and five eighths. three and five eighths i need to put a mark here Moving it over to a slot. There you go. Moving it over to a complete inch. Which in this case is 4. Then I'm scoring at 5. Then this is automatically again 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. I'm guessing. I'm just guessing. Let's hope I'm correct. <laughs> Let's just hope I did it right. Here's one. Here's another one. And the last one. Mm 
boxy. I think we did it right. Now, let's do some gluing. Made all the snippies in this one. Yep. So, I need to fold this here and here. To make the size of the box. Please stay. Thank you. Yep. Put the glue here. There we go. Doing the same on the other side. Just putting a piece of glue to hold these two, a bit of glue to hold these two pieces together. See if it will fit, it will. And then putting glue here. Boxy, yep. And then we need to put glue on one of these parts. Who we'll also love the inside. Mm. Oh well, choices, choices. Make sure it all matches up everywhere. There you go. Now, the big question, will it fit? Else we're gonna make it fit. No, it'll fit, it'll fit. See, oh yes, fits easily. Perfect, ooh, lovely box. Love I'm gonna put tickets in here. See, this is a ticket. I'm gonna put tickets in here. Fantastic, we made three boxes. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. Now I've inked all around these, but let me show you how I ink them, just in case you're wondering from how did you, how did you get this sort of result? Um, I'm using a darker ink because I want them to be very grungy. This is ground espresso. I'm just inking all the edges, and I'm gonna do it really grungy. Yes. So not lightly or slightly. No. I'm inking it up, guys. So here on the top. I did not do any inking on the inside. That's okay. Uh, there's probably going to be stuff in here, so you won't even see the bottom. Yeah. And then what I do, I just want these sort of corners to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to ink these corners. I just like it. See, I'm just putting a little bit more ink on these corners. For no other reason at all than I just like it. Grunge it up. And then also, the lid. Of course, I'm going to do all the edges here again. I am not being stingy with my ink. No, I'm just really inking it. You don't have to, of course. Maybe you made uh, this with, you know, flowers and fairies and bubbles. I don't know what you're into. What you're into? Tell me what you're into. What sort of papers did you, do you like to use? So all the edges everywhere. And then again, I'm just doing a little bit more on, the, on all the corners also sort of creates a little bit of a dimension in the paper, I guess. You're still guessing. Oh, there's another way of guessing. See? Lovely. Well, I think it's lovely. Other people are like, you ruined it! You completely ruined it with putting all your ink stuff on here. Oh, there's a lot of white here. There you go. You just fit, love. Come on. I'm going to do it from the other side. <laughs> Sometimes that works. Yes. Ta-da! Lovely, lovely boxes. We have three very cute boxes. Actually, this doesn't need any more decorating, but I'm going to decorate it anyway. I just, I just love these. Now, guys, it would have been much easier to decorate the covers of these sort of boxes uh, when we didn't glue it all together. That would have been the easiest route, but I didn't. So I am going to glue on here, but the surface is sort of like a trampoline. I did do some um, searching for bits and bobs in advance because that would have taken a long, long time. 
So there's a ticket on here. So I wanted to have another ticket like so. I have a small little label. I have a small birdie and a piece of this tape with all the numbers. And I don't know exactly how I want to, I of course want to have the number 15 visible somewhere. Probably here, yeah. And then the birdie sort of here. What do you think? Cute, right? Yeah. I'm using art for this. Doesn't really need art, but I want it to be stuck down very, very quickly. Normally I would use glue stick. But because we don't have a solid surface, I'm going to do it like so. This is going to go over here. Yep. With this one. These uh, labels are from uh, Michelle, um, the Junk Journal Studio. Um, I use them a lot, a lot. And I am on her design team. So I have decided, decided that I will have her shop linked below permanently from now on. Yeah? Because A, the digital kit is fantastic. The, the kits are absolutely wonderful. Love all of them. Um, and she's a lovely person. And she deserves to have the, her link permanently in here. Well, that's what I think. Do you like it? I love it. Love it. Let's do another one. This one. Now, this one doesn't really, it doesn't need more decorating. You could also decorate here. We could, you know, put stuff here. Maybe I will. Don't know. Uh, but I wanted to decorate on here. The theme of this sort of boxes are birds. I wanted to use some birds. I love this sort of orangey bit here and here. Do you love this sort of number? Ooh. Yeah. So I'm going to have a big label over here. And I have this off cut from, this is not a doily, this was a die cut from a globe, a world globe. And I just thought it might look nice underneath here. I think so. Then have the bird over here and I have a postage stamp. Like so? Sure, sure, why not? Um, art, Ooh, all the tiny dots, hopefully. I'm gluing in between the, <laughs> the papers, did you see that? Yeah, that doesn't really work, love, no. The glue needs to be on the paper. Well, it'll work. Just checking where I want the other label to be. Yep. And the big one. This came from the Fall Bounty Kit, the beautiful orange. I don't believe there is a winter kit for fall, fall, the fall day, the winter bounty kit hopefully there will be but i don't know i mean michelle could be very busy you know with family and the holidays and such but i hope there will i hope there will be and there you go and then the little bird yep Little, 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 there, a little bit here, and there, and there. There you go. It is just lovely. It just is. And the last one, we have another one. Again, with a big bird. Do you like it? I love this bird. The green and the red, just they really pop. Another big label, again from Michelle. I'm going to put a postage stamp here. I have another piece. This is a piece of a doily. I think I want to have it like so. Yeah. And then the bird on here with Queen Elizabeth. 
sort of underneath. Yeah? Yeah. We need to start with this one. Now I know there's a trick with putting glue on your hand and then have glue here and then do this so there's glue on everything. I'm not going to put glue on my hand. <laughs> no, I am sorry. I No, that's just no. But um thank you for the tip though. <laughs> yeah, I got a tip from a subscriber. And she learned it at um, Artie Mays. Artie Mays did this. Who's brilliant. Do you know Artie Mays? Look her up. On YouTube. She's fantastic. She is real. I love people that are real. She is not pretending to be any anybody. Well, neither am I. I mean, if you think I'm pretending to be a uh, lunatic now and then. Still, no. That's just me. <laughs> It's just me. There you go. This one is from Czechoslovakia. It's a beautiful one. Yeah. You're going to use it? Of course I am. Because I have a gazillion of these. So need to use it. Put this one here. And then let's see where we want the bird. And... Um, A lovely Elizabeth underneath. Are we going to cut? We're going to cut this. Um, I have very tiny scissors. These don't ask me where I got them. Some like ages ago in a craft store. These are tweezers and scissors, sort of at the same time. I never did find these again, so much better, right? Much better. Elizabeth is going to go on here. Very nice. More glue here, well, apparently. Or press it. And then this one. It's like he's pecking at Elizabeth. <laughs> That's okay. Glue, glue, glue. Love them. It's my bird boxes. Fantastic. I'm going to show you uh, what I put in it when I do the end result. I have so many boxes now. I feel like a moving company. <laughs> this is the one that I've made in a video early this year. Uh, and I used uh, digitals from Vintage by Me. You can check out the video, but don't. Just don't. Don't. <laughs> I love it. And then these are the... Um, Prototypes that I've made, all of which uh, are from scrapbook paper that I buy cheaply at Action. I will not decorate them. I will do eventually um, when I send them out in Happy Mail. I will put bits and bobs in. Uh, well, they won't fit in an envelope, but my Happy Mails come in boxes. Yeah, so I will use them. And then these are the ones that we have made today. Love them. The smallest one is two and a half by three inches. No worry, uh, don't worry about the um, sizes, guys. I will put everything in the description box uh, below. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can always email me. So this one, um, the paper that I've used is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's from a book called Reminiscence, the book four. There are five books in total. Well, actually four, because if you don't have number one, sadly, you cannot get it anymore. But this came from book number four. It has lots of blues and greens in here. What I did on the inside, I filled it with tickets. Yes, lots of tickets. Because there's a ticket on here and here. And I thought, oh, why not? So there are tickets in here. And then this one, this box, I have made from a digital by um, Artology. <clears throat> Fantastic digital designer on Etsy. And a very lovely person as well. So I will link um, her Etsy shop below. Yep, this one. Oh, I love this paper. Love the cover. Yeah. 
And I put a doilies in here, paper doilies. Um, I make these, either make these myself. I have some die cuts with these sort of doily um, shapes. And I also buy them on Instagram from my friend uh, Sandra at Old Made Awesome. So love this one. And then this one, the big, biggest one. I never made one that was this big, but I actually really love this because it will hold so much stuff. Now this paper is from a scrapbook. I saved this. Yes, it is from AB Studios. There, here's where you probably can, if you can get it still, you can get it there. And it's called In Wonderland. It's a lovely one. Yeah, it's double-sided. So yeah, in this box, I have a lot, not all of it, because there is so much of it, um, of labels and such from uh, the Junk Journal Studio. Because I use them all the time. And now they can be permanently on my desk and in my description box so yeah that's it guys i hope i hope you liked it i recommend taking out a piece of scrapbook paper that you don't love yeah and then try it just try it i mean in this case practice makes perfect it does because you know the last box is much easier to assemble than the, than the first one so try it if you have any questions about um, measurements or whatever you can always ask in the comments below or if you want a longer answer uh, email me at sevenplaza.yt at gmail.com also link below now guys if you i did uh did this video in inches if you are Dutchy, hello, um, and you have a scoreboard in centimeters and you're totally confused, as would I've been, <laughs> I have this video earlier this year. I think it was in the 100 day project number 19. Don't really know for sure. This video is completely in centimeters. Well, that's it for today. Guys, I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you could uh, craft along with me. I'll be back again tomorrow with my top favorite uh, craft supplies for 2022. Um, there are also going to be a lot of stuff in there that I've, bu I've bought before 2022. But I just want to share with you. <clears throat> it's going to be all sorts. It's going to be a very interesting one because I'm also going to talk about what didn't work. And... Um, some stuff that I have like an alternative for, for something very expensive. This is going to be the first one. It's going to be an annual thing, I, th I think. Yeah, uh, in December, I'm going to do a top five of this and this and this uh, because I like those videos. I hope you like them as well. So join me again tomorrow. Until then, bye guys.